It's Monday afternoon. I'm here at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory because in just a few minutes, NASA is about to land its latest probe on Mars. All stations and systems, we can confirm we are in three minus 20 minutes. Its name is InSight. It'll be the first lander to study the interior of Mars. We've been following this mission since it launched in May from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. And we were actually there for the launch, though we didn't actually see anything. Well, there's a rocket in there somewhere. <laughs> the launch was a success. And now more than six months later, we're here to see the next phase of InSight's mission begin. But first, the probe has to get to the surface in one piece. And landing on Mars is an incredibly intense feat, a process that has claimed the lives of numerous robots over the last 50 years. So we're here for the landing with some of the people leading the InSight mission, and we're all holding our breath. InSight's mission is unlike that of any other spacecraft we've sent to Mars. All of our past Mars probes have studied the planet's environment above ground, but InSight is focused on what's underneath the surface. It'll be listening for Mars quakes, or whenever the planet shakes, to determine what kind of material makes up the red planet's mantle and core. Each time a quake occurs, InSight will study the structure of the seismic waves as they pass through the planet, using that information like an ultrasound to find out what is lurking underneath the crust. Of course, InSight and its instruments had to make it all the way to Mars first. Farah Alibay is a payload systems engineer for InSight, which means all those instruments are her responsibility. We caught up with Farah during the launch in May, and she told us she'd be busy during InSight's long cruise. So during cruise, we actually prepare for landing. Uh, so we'll do those instrument checkouts, we'll make sure that everything's healthy, but we also do things like dress rehearsals for landing and for landed days. Uh, because the first time that you're doing a deployment, the first time that you're taking a picture, you don't want that to be the first time that you've built that command and sent it. Mm -hmm. So we actually do like full on, like week long dress rehearsals. Um, and then there's something called, uh, we sometimes have gremlins as part of the team that will inject errors. Uh, so they'll either give us false data or they'll literally like take someone out of a room or you know say someone's sick or feed us wrong yeah. information. I mean I want to be a NASA that. gremlin yeah. that sounds like the funnest job. And because I have to practice I don't get to be the gremlin. Oh, but. No. <laughs> practice is key because landing on Mars is super tough. The planet has enough atmosphere to heat the spacecraft up during its descent to the ground but not enough to slow it down fully with parachutes alone. That's why InSight was designed with a very complex landing routine. Equipped with a heat shield, InSight hits the atmosphere at 12,300 miles per hour and heats up to a peak 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. The air slows down the vehicle to less than 1,000 miles per hour, and at seven miles up, the spacecraft deploys a supersonic parachute to slow down even further. Eventually, the lander drops away and uses its own onboard thrusters to land gently on the ground. It's all very complicated and every little piece has to go exactly right. Fortunately, the mission team has picked a landing site that will make things a little easier. Ingrid Daubar is a research scientist at JPL who helped pick where the spacecraft will touch down. What goes into picking a landing site for this mission? We ended up picking the flattest, most boring place on Mars to land, um, which isn't very exciting on the surface, but because InSight is studying the interior of Mars, we can kind of do that from anywhere on Mars. We're trying to avoid anything that might interfere with the landing sequence of the spacecraft. So any kind of steep slope or rock, um, if, the, if the lander happened to settle, for example, like in a crater with steep walls, it might end up tilted on its side. That might mean that it might have trouble deploying the solar arrays. For example, if it was really tilted, the solar arrays would kind of hit the ground, no. so that would be bad. <laughs> you also have picked a mini landing spot, not for InSight, but for its instruments. So explain how that works. So once InSight lands, um, then we actually deploy the instruments onto the surface of Mars. Um, and to do that, um, there's, there'll be kind of a limited workspace in front of the spacecraft where we can put them where the arm can reach. The seismometer is so sensitive that it needs to be deployed as far away from the other machinery as possible. Farah saw why when she tested the instrument in Colorado. And when we did that, all the way at Lockheed Martin in Littleton, Colorado, we could hear waves from the Pacific and the Atlantic crashing, and you could see that in the noise. So it's incredibly sensitive. 
With all that prep in place, it's almost time for landing, but we won't actually get to see it happen live. There aren't any cameras on Mars, and one light signal takes eight minutes to reach here on Earth. Everything has to be automated, but if all goes well, the lander will send out an I'm okay beep when it gets to the ground. When that happens, you'll see a lot of happy engineers. Standing by for parachute deploy. 600 meters. Gravity turn, altitude 400 meters. 300 meters. 200 meters. 50 meters, constant velocity. 17 meters, standing by for touchdown. Touchdown confirmed. <laughs> Let's just wait. Let's see what they saw. There it is. Wow, what? I am so excited, also exhausted. Uh, it's an incredible feeling. I don't even know how to explain it. Right? It's my whole career. Marco and Insight were both successful. Everything went well. I mean, I don't think I'd imagine it would go this well, even in my wildest dreams. I don't know how to describe it. It's definitely a feeling of extreme relief here in the auditorium. Everybody was dead silent right up until the end. And when we got that confirmation of landing, everyone just breathed a huge sigh. We can all celebrate a new spacecraft on the surface of Mars.